Okay, so thank you everybody for coming along. It's really nice to see so many faces. Um, this is the first of our uh, Christmas um, workshops. So we're really excited because obviously this year has been pretty rubbish so far. Um, so at least we can do some fun Christmassy things together, not together. So um, you should have your packs all um, sorted and packed up beautifully. Georgia, I know yours will be different because mum um, unpacked all of yours, didn't she? And sent us the bits that you needed. But um, I will just go through what we're doing. So this evening, we're going to paint one of these tiles together. And then the other one is in your pack for you guys to just do at your own time. So in your own time, um, whenever it works for you. But the idea is we'll all do one together. So you've, if you've got any questions, if there's anything that you, know, you need to chat to us about, we'll show you how it all works. And then you should be able to go on and do the next one. Now with Pip recording this, this does go up on YouTube of all places. I never thought I would be on YouTube ever, um, but it goes on YouTube. We've got a Glaze Creations channel and all of our previous projects are up on there as well. So it does mean that if you needed to, you can always go back to the video as well if you get stuck with anything. Christine, so, you forgot to do the, what, what the YouTube kids do. You have to do the like, the like and subscribe. Don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not down with Steve. I met my son in with a paper punch bag today because he um, had driven me mad. So I am not down with the kids at the moment. <laughs> I am in the bad mood. So um, in your kit, you have either chosen the snowman and the penguin. That's this little set here. Or you have chosen, let me grab them, Father Christmas and Rudolph. So We've got um, the set going in here, and then in your bags, you should have, now bear with me, because obviously there are different colors. So, you should have two pieces of paper with the design that you've chosen. You should have a pot of black glaze like this. You should have a little pot like this with a sticker on the top. Mm -hmm. This is wax resist, don't get this mixed up with anything else, I'll talk about that in a little while. You should have a big paintbrush and a small paintbrush. Then you should all have, now some of you have got slightly different bottles because I did have a bottle delivery crisis, but you should have a blue glaze in a bottle like this. Mm -hmm. And then another one that's a bit less that's got LB written on it. That stands for light blue, just so you don't mix that up with your white. Those of you doing the penguin and the snowman, you should have red and orange. Yep. Yep. And then you should have two bottles of white. That should be your kit. Now, those of you with the snowman, uh, sorry, the reindeer and Santa, you should have um, two little bottles of brown, um, a white, and then a skin colour as well. Has everybody got what they're supposed to have? Oh, and two tiles. It would be rubbish if I didn't pack the tiles in the box. <laughs> Perfect. So, everyone's got great. Right. Go on. Okay. So the other things that I've got um, out on my table is my cup of tea, which is obviously very important. But I've also got some water here and a hairdryer. So hopefully you guys saw that in the email that went out. But we need a hairdryer or a form of drying these really quickly. Now, we are doing batik, which is actually designed for fabric. So um, I don't know if any of you have given it a go, but it's really, really fun to do. Um, you get these really cool little pens, they look like an upside down apple, um, but you draw your design onto fabric in, in melted wax and then you can dye your fabrics and then once you've washed it you get this beautiful design coming in. Now obviously um, we can't do that uh, with pottery but this is our own spin on it or Mako's own spin on it. Now we did this at pottery camp and we had loads and loads of fun. But actually, for those of you that have painted with us before, you will be a little bit worried by how much glaze we're putting on here. Now, um, all of us thought, oh, these are just going to crawl. And when glaze is too thick on pottery and it's fired, it pulls away from the bisque. So it's called crawling and it kind of moves where it's not supposed to. But because we rapid dry these and we cause the glaze to crack in these lovely little bits here, there's all these beautiful cracks coming in. They're not actually a full crack. They're basically just, if you imagine um, a dry riverbed, it's that kind of thing. It's kind of where it's dried out and it's moved, but it almost gives it enough space that it then doesn't crawl off the piece when it's fired. Now, there is a bit of a fine line between adding enough glaze to get this effect and it crawling. We did see a few people on Pottery Camp that had had theirs crawl, 
But in all honesty, I think they must have gone absolutely mad with the amount of glaze they put on there, like crazy mad. So, um, but again, we'll, we'll just kind of, we'll talk you guys through it as we go. Now it's really hard for you to see on this, but there is a texture to this. So there is, I don't know if I can even come in at that angle. The black is much lower than the color. Oh, that's a good one here, thanks. So the black is much, much lower down than all the color that's there. So the, it does kind of dip in on the black. So you can see that the colors are, are much thicker. Um, but this is the kind of thing that we're going to go for. So has everybody painted with this before? I haven't got any newbies. No, perfect. Okay, so um, when I talk about um, the different brushes, we've got our fan brush here, which lets us put lots of glaze on in a short space of time. And then we've got our detail brush here. Now, what you are going to need after we've used the wax resist is just access to um, warm water and some washing up liquid because wax resist does exactly what it says on the tin. It's going to resist our glaze that we put over the top. So once we've used this brush in the wax resist, we just need to wash the tip out um, with some fairy liquid or some hand soap and some warm water. But um, we can all escape and do that um, when we get to that stage. Um, and then we've got these little bottles which are designed with a nice tip on the top. Now, they're childproof ones, there we go. So the idea is you're going to be able to squeeze your glaze out of this nib and be able to fill in the areas that we haven't then resisted. So we're going to start with just one tile. You can choose whether you're doing your penguin, your snowman, your father Christmas or your reindeer, whichever one you want to do tonight, it doesn't matter. And we're going to start by base coating it in two coats of black glaze. Now the back of these tiles haven't got any glaze on. Um, it, there's, a, there's an awful lot of glaze going on the front, so we probably don't need to seal the back in. And because they're decorative, this is then still that kind of bisque finish. Um, these won't get dip glazed, so they will literally go in the kiln as we finish them today. So with that in mind, just make sure you come round your edge of your tile in your black as well, so you get a really nice finish on it. And then obviously once it's hung up on the wall um, with a nice piece of ribbon, then you've got lovely things to show off. All right. So we're going to start with the black. Now, everything that we're using tonight is washable. The only thing is, and I'll go back to the wax resist, is if this accidentally goes where you don't want it to, you're going to have to embrace it and make it part of your design. If you don't, um, basically you can't scrape it off. Once it's in, it sinks straight through that glaze and it stays exactly where it is. The only way we're going to get rid of that is by firing it off. So um, if you do drip some, you might have to turn it into a snowball. So just to kind of keep that in mind as you're going on. So when it comes to using the fan brush, you're just going to dip it in some water and then you're just going to put that brush full of water into your pot of black glaze. Now, before it's fired, this glaze looks really grey. It's actually our foundation glaze, but it goes on beautifully. It's a really, really smooth, nice glaze to work with. And we're going to fully load our brush there. So it's ready to drip, but it doesn't quite do it. So um, try not to be tempted to do this and wipe it all off because then you're going to end up with a really dry brush. So you're going to fill it up and then you're just going to do nice long sweeping brush strokes. Don't worry too much about the holes at the top. When these come back to be fired, if I've noticed there's loads of glaze in there, I'll clean them out, but you don't need to um, worry about the brush emptying into those hanging holes. And then the idea is to do nice long sweeping strokes so you've got it covered. Don't worry too much about brush strokes and slightly finer ends and then just come on round your edge and make sure you've got your colour on there. Now we want two good coats on this because this is our only base that's going to cover the pottery. So if we leave bits or if our coats are really thin, um, it will break away when we start doing our design. So we just need to make sure that these coats go on and they set up really well. Glaze needs to set up with the pottery, so it needs to dry properly before you add your next coat, otherwise you'll just be moving the glaze around. So we'll just let that lose time before you go for your next coat. Yeah. 
how do I take a cat hair off? I'm um, just leave it in there because it'll burn away and it won't leave a mark at all. So don't worry about it. But I think it's it's in one direction with my previous coat. Now you didn't have to if you haven't done that, that's fine. But if you have done, the best thing to do for your second coat is just to turn it and go in the opposite direction, just to make sure that this covers in a really nice, even coverage. So once it's lost its shine completely, you're just going to apply your second coat of black glaze. You want to make sure that this is a nice coverage. So if your paintbrush is really dry and it's kind of dragging along and you can kind of hear it, you need to add more glaze to your piece. Um, and then just make sure you get your second coat going around the edges as well. Now you'll see that you should have half a pot left of your black, which is then available for you to use for your next tile. So when you're done, pop your tiles down and let them dry and then just shut your lid down on that pot. Otherwise it will dry out and it gets a bit of a skin on the top. Um, if for some reason you notice it has dried a bit when you come to do your next one, just add a little bit more water. Um, if it's fine, you don't need to add any more water at all. And then just wash out your fan brush. We don't need those anymore, actually. You can keep them for your next one. Um, I am actually the proud owner of the snowman, whereas Laura did the penguin. So I'd like a set for myself. So I'm going to go for the little penguin this time. But it's entirely up to you um, which one you go for. And then once it's lost its shine completely, so mine now doesn't have any shiny bits left and um, it's, it's safe to touch. So that's the stage that we're going to get to. Now I'm going to wait for you all to catch up a little bit. Um, you don't want to go any sooner than that because if you try and transfer now um, and, and it still has some shine, it's going to lift that glaze straight off of your piece and you don't want that to happen. But when you have lost your shine, you're ready to transfer. So you're just going to get your image and place it down and just kind of bend it around the corner so you know where, it, where it's at. Now you want your little um, penguin or snowman or any of the characters to, to sit flat against the edge. So just make sure that that's positioned really well. And make sure it's on there and then with a pencil holding it steady i'm just going to draw i'm not pressing very hard so either a pen or a pencil and just drawing around each bit ahead of you guys which is fine because the idea is when you're waiting for yours to dry I'll be able to take this off and show you what I've done. <laughs> what do you need that bundle? What I'm doing is I'm going around the outside edge first and then I'm going to work my way around all of the lines so just make sure you know exactly where you've been because you want all of these lines marked on um, it will just make it easier for your next stage. So don't just do the outside, work your way into your image as well.
Okay, so just to double check mine because I've chosen a silver pencil because it's the only thing I could grab. I'm just going to lift it up and have a sneaky peek and make sure everything I want is on there. Um, so this is then what you're aiming for. So I don't know if you can see with mine, but I've now transferred the image. So the black is still there, but it's slightly embossed. Now I really didn't need to press very hard. So um, when you come to do yours, can you see how that's transferred? I'm trying to look on my screen to see if it's better than what's on my phone. There we go. So that's what you're aiming for. You just want to transfer your image just enough so that you're going to be able to paint it on in a little while with your wax. So once you're ready to go, do that bit and then it can just sit. Now, if you were running both of them at the same time, you could get them both to the stage where you transfer and you leave. That will then still be visible in 24, 48 hours time for you to be able to work on. But just when you do your next one, if you do have to stop, this would be the time to stop after you've transferred um, before you then go on to the next bit. So just to bear that in mind when you're kind of juggling, juggling life that goes on as well. Hopefully you guys will be drying soon. I am stuck in the playroom and it is boiling in here. So um, it's drying really, really quickly in my house. <laughs> it's only going to get hotter when we turn the hair dryers on as well. It's really interesting watching you all paint. There's some of you are really studious, like really concentrating on what you're up to. And there's others that are very obviously waiting for paint to dry. <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite funny to watch. <laughs> Not at all in a freaky, we're watching you paint way either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, enjoy. <laughs> we, we could be a double act whilst they're concentrating. We could. It's what we would have done in the studio, to be fair. Although right now would be the time that we'd put the kettle on for you guys and possibly even crack out the mince pies. It would be mince pie time by now. <laughs> Christina, yes. when, I've, when I've lifted up after having done the pen work, transferring the design, it looks like some of the black has come off. Okay. Are it you almost looks bisque? like a white line. Okay, if you're down to bisque, with your fine brush, just um, touch it up a little bit, just get some more black on there because we want the black to be on the pottery. So the idea is you don't, yeah, it doesn't lift. Now it will do sometimes, it just depends on the force that you put through the paper and things like that, but everything is fixable with this project. So um, you just need to use your fine brush and just fill those, um, fill those white bits in if you can. Yeah. Hopefully it will be along a line that you'll be able to just follow with your eye when it comes to the next stage. But if not, we'll let it dry really well and then we can just add it back in again just so you can follow it easily. Sam, you've gone green. <laughs> you've got grass growing on you. Lucas mucking around. He's doing it What with us. Hi, Lucas. You've turned mum into some sort of zombie. Hello. <laughs> oh, Which one did you decide to do, Kim? Are you going for Father Christmas or the reindeer? Ah, uh, for Christmas. Oh, <laughs> Christmas. Nice. Yes.
Now, wax resist is um, a liquid wax. So um, this is where almost the batik side of things come in. Um, but the idea is you're going to block any area of your tile that is to remain black with the wax. So you're now, when we're going on to the next stage, going to be thinking about how you want it to look when it's done. So obviously, I'm just going to use the penguin as an example. But our penguin has quite a lot of black on his little body. But we've also outlined all of the snowballs just to make them really pop and really stand out. We've then come in and we've outlined his scarf as well and in between his beak and also a bit around his eyes. Now just be very careful when it comes to doing the eyes of all of these because they can very easily look scary. Now I will just show you my reindeer which I wanted to refire but I didn't have the time to do it. Um, I drew him by hand so he's my own design and I think his eyes are a little bit startled. It's a little bit like Father Christmas has caught him up to no good. So um, if it was me doing it again, I'd just bring in a little bit more white round here and I'll shrink those pupils down a little bit so he's not so like, ah! Um, so when you're painting your black, just have a little think about how you want your eyes to be. Now this little champ, he didn't have eyeballs at first and looked really scary. So he just had black eyes similar to the snowman actually. So he's just got black coal eyes, which work really well. But obviously with a little penguin, just have a little think about where you're going to have your black. So if you want um, a little pupil, if you want anything like that, you're going to need to reverse that in your mind. Now, if you need to draw on your piece of paper with your pen, just get yourself a little idea as to how um, you're going to do your eyeballs before you start painting your wax on. So that's just my little hint for the evening. But then what we're going to do when you've all transferred is with our fine brushes, we're just going to dip into the wax resist and we're going to paint around all of our areas. Now, on here, I want to show you them both at the same time if I can. So we're going to be putting a blob of white in our snow a snowball. So all of you, um, actually Kim, you don't, but the rest of us have snowballs. With your paintbrush, you'll just be painting around this line that you drew. You don't want to fill your snowball in because then it will be a black ball. So you're just going to go around your snowballs as a thin line. Now, when it comes to painting the penguin's head, for instance, that's all black. This whole section here will be black. So you can then just kind of color that in as such with your wax resist. And then again, coming back in with this scarf, we're just gonna do a nice thin line around the edge. Now, when I say thin, I'm not meaning to use the point of your paintbrush, which will be really, really, really thin. We're going to go for a paintbrush thickness. So we're going to paint like this as we go around. Now do, as I say before, be very, very careful with your wax resist and where it goes, but I'm just gonna show you a little bit um, with the first one. Now these brushes are brand new. We don't need to add any water, but just kind of get the bristles moving a little bit on your finger, because you'll notice that they've been set quite firmly there. So let's go on here. So when the wax resist goes on, it's a bit like a, a kind of milky looking paint, and you're just going to paint round. And once it's on, that is then it. So if it dries, you won't then be able to repaint over the top because it will resist itself. You know, it's going to dry very, very quickly um, as, as a waxed finish. So I'm just going to show you the thickness that I was talking about with the scarf, for instance. So we're just going to come in like that. So it's a proper line, you know, we've got we've got a proper defined line coming in there. So this is now what you're going to do. So once you've transferred, you're now going to add your wax. Now I tend to leave the eyes till the end because that's the bit that I need to concentrate most with. The rest of it, you can just go on as you're going through. Now, will it be helpful for me to have the images of the ones that you're doing on show so you can kind of see where the black's going? If I can bring them all into this view. There you go, you can see them all there. Now, if you need me to hold any of these up, then just let me know. Um, obviously with your snowman, you're gonna go for a nice thick smile. You want to get that on nice and thickly, don't go too thin, because when you start adding white, it wants to fill that gap in. Um, his hat is all black apart from the ribbon that we added in, and just make sure you get your black edge coming in there. Um, on the carrot nose, we've got some lines coming in just to add a little bit of definition. And then again, coming around his scarf. 
And then with Father Christmas, we've just got a line coming up here on his hat. Um, we've got these little bits coming in at the side just to make it look a little bit more scrunched. And then we've got his moustache coming in. Now, what you could do is do some little kind of semicircles. So his beard looks really curly, um, but I quite like the way the cracks just kind of do that. They almost make it look hair like. So we're just going back to the penguin's head. Yeah. It's all black. We're doing that all in wax, though. Yeah, I would. Now, you can just leave it, but it's quite nice, um, I think, to have that sort of protection on yeah. the back once we start adding the rest of the colours because they do want to move quite a bit. Now, if you're happy just to do your outline, then you can do, but I would be tempted, especially on mine, um, just because I know how, how I paint and how heavy handed I am. I am just going to paint the wax over the top of the black yeah, just fine. to make sure it's covered. A little bit of wax goes a really long way. So although these pots look small, there's probably enough in there to do at least six, maybe even eight tiles like this. Is it better to do the outline and then fill it in? I probably would. That's how I'm going to go around with um, my little penguin's head. I'm just doing his outlining and then I'll, I'll come back and fill it in as I go. Um, only because that would be how I would colour in as well. I tend to do that too. So I guess it's just personal choice. I don't think there's a right or a wrong way of, of doing it. It's just whatever feels feels like the right thing to do. You'll find with the wax as well, it resists itself. So if you've outlined and then you're colouring in, don't be surprised that it doesn't kind of blend in with what you've already put down, but that doesn't matter. It's still doing its job protecting. So you'll often see kind of brush strokes or it looks a little bit messy where you've gone on top of more wax and it doesn't sit very nicely, but that's not a problem to your final piece. The wax will all burn up in the kiln. My video completely died well, as soon as you started talking about the wax. So am I basically painting where all the black is with the wax and do I need to wet the brush first? You don't need to wet the brush first. Um, you're just going to move the bristles in your fingers um, because they're, they're a brand new brush. So they're quite kind of stiff bristles initially. Um, and then, yes, you're just going to dip in to your wax and then off you go around your lines only on the area that you want to remain black so bearing in mind when you come to doing the snow the snowflakes or the snowballs um, you just want to do a thin line around the edge of it because then you're going to add in your white so just bear in mind where things are going to go did you hear my spiel about the eyes keep keep in mind that you need to want the white in the center Yes, yeah. So just to kind of make a plan about how you want their eyes to look because they can look a little bit scary and a bit zombified if you don't quite get them right. So um, I tend to do the eyes right at the end. Any hint how to do kind of the curve of the head? 
kind of as a, as a really fluid movement. Yeah, so I tend to um, work my paintbrush as if I'm looking at the outer edge of it. So um, as I kind of come round, say if I'm sort of following this curve, I'll use the outer edge of the paintbrush and then I, I'll move it round like that. So I kind of, it, it sort of follows the handle as I'm going. Um, I don't know if you can see that well enough with the shine, but it will go down on the edge and then I'm just going to work my way around like that and it just follows along and then you get that really nice edge to it. If you're really struggling, you can very carefully go along with it kind of at almost at 90 degrees to get your line in and then fill it in. But I try and just use it more of a kind of fill your paintbrush and then like pull it along, kind of let it let it glide the way it wants to go. Does that help at all? Mm -hmm. I can show you a little bit here on the body, actually. So, I'm just going to be where I put my hand so I don't actually put it in the So I'm going to touch it down like that and then I'm just going to kind of pull it along the edge and it just uh, wants to follow that line. But mm -hmm. I'm not concentrating on the inside of my brush, it's just the outside. And as long as you don't push too hard, you then get a really nice edge coming in. Oh, that's much better. Well, I think I'm on mute. No, that is much better. Yeah.
I don't know how you're all getting on with doing that, but you'll see how much wax resist you've got left. There's quite a lot in there. Now, um, just to stop me running away mid zoom, I um, brought my washing up liquid and my water in with me. So um, I'm just going to rub the washing up liquid through the bristles, just to break that wax down. And then I'm going to rinse it in different water. It's not the water that I had earlier on. So just to let you know, now it goes really kind of creamy. It's a, it's yeah, not very nice when it's being cleaned off, but you should be able to get that off nicely with warm water and washing up liquid. So we don't need to use wax resist anymore. So um, pop your lid back on once you've um, done your image and then just keep it for the next project. Now, um, if you want to, we're going to be getting more of these tiles in stock. Now, by all means, you don't need to um, get all four, but if you wanted to, you have got the wax resist and you will have quite a lot of the color left. So um, there is the option of you guys doing these um, and adding more um, if, you, if you're wanting to, because you've got a lot of the kit already. Um, the stock should come in in the next week or so. But wax resist is great. We've actually used it on quite a few projects this year um, and we've really enjoyed using it. Um, when it first came out, it was really claggy. Um, when you used it on a paintbrush, it ruined the paintbrush. You could never get it clean unless you bought this special product that went with it. And even that was a bit hit and miss. Um, but now they've changed the formulation and they've changed the way it goes on. And it is just a really, really nice, um, really nice product to use when you're painting. Um, I like it in particular, obviously for this, it works brilliantly because of how much glaze we're adding, but also if you've done like, you know, lots of fine work and things, it just protects everything before you start adding your other layers on the top. So it is a really nice product to use. Um, if you guys are going on to do other projects and you want to paint at home and things like that, if ever you're wanting anything like wax resist, it's not on the website to buy, but just drop me a little note in your order form and I can sort you out with a little pot if it's something that you're wanting um, to use and to have a go with. On an ornamental piece, you can use wax resist, resist straight against the bisque. Now, it will mean that you will have bisque on show when it comes back, but if you're wanting to do something funky, you want to paint with it and kind of block it out and then just have like a shiny glaze over the top, it would work really, really well. Um, the thing I've got in mind is ball balls. Ball balls are brilliant if you just use stickers straight onto the pottery. And then you add your three coats of glaze, you've got this really bright, shiny um, ball ball, then with the dull bisque kind of, you know, non-sheen um, in your pattern. So wax resist would work really well for that if you wanted to kind of doodle on your designs with your paintbrush. And then um, you can have it shiny with the non-shiny parts. So just to give you an idea of the other kind of things that you can do with it. But yeah, wax resist is great in my opinion. I love it. How are you all doing? Are you all covered? Nice mug, Natalie. I'm impressed. <laughs> Sorry, I muted myself while I was making more drinks. I know it's it's absolutely my favourite one to drink out of because it just feels nice in your hand. Mm. Yeah, it's it such is. a nice mug to drink out of. I love mine. <laughs> it is. I use it a couple of times, absolutely every single day without fail. It's Brilliant. Just, <laughs> it's nice to hold. So yeah. yeah. Cheers. There we go. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> so has everyone got their wax on are we all happy with where we're at yes yeah okay so now we're going to work on the next bit and like i said before um this bit is a little bit speedier now you'll all go at your own pace but the idea is you don't want to hang around too much because we want to blast dry these tiles with glaze all over them quite rapidly. What you don't want to do is spend ages delicately putting your glaze on and then find that you don't get this lovely cracking coming into play. Um, with my snowman, I don't know if you can see the difference, um, on the white it cracked beautifully but on all of this, this had already started to dry. Now although I've got the cracks coming in, they're not as um, intense as I'd wanted them to be because this had already started drying on me before I could then kind of blast heat it. So the idea is um, you go for adding all of your colour. I'll talk to you about it all before we start with like swirling it and things like that. You're going to add all your colour and then I think Pip will mute us all because it's going to get really noisy. 
we'll get the hair dryers on. Now, without sounding um, silly and patronising, your pottery is going to get really hot. So please don't burn yourself moving your tile once it's then dry. Um, we had ours with a little fan heater and I did exactly that. So I'm only saying just, you know, you, you don't realise how much heat these are absorbing while you're busy drying away and then you go and pick it up and actually they're really, really, really hot. So please just be a bit careful. But basically you're going to add all of your colour. We're going to add um, orange over the red with the snowman um, and the penguin. Now it's up to you what you do with design. So if it was me, I wouldn't swap your colours. I wouldn't necessarily add blue here because I don't think it's going to stand out enough on your snowman hat and scarf and the same with the penguin, but you can do orange with red design. Um, you can do dots, you can do stripes. You don't have to copy exactly what we've done here. Um, but just to kind of break it up a little bit and add a bit of something else, we just added the extra bit of, of design. Um, but the idea is we are going to squeeze our glaze onto here and it will kind of puddle, it will pull, and we're just gonna move the nib around and kind of fill in all of the gaps. I will show you on mine before you all get started. But as we're going, you're then going to make sure you've got your clean, small brush because you might find if it's a little bit thick, you can then kind of move the glaze over a bit and you've got a bit more flexibility with this without damaging the base layer as you do with these plastic nibs that are on here. If you start scratching this on that base layer, it's going to lift the black up. Um, with the blue, you're going to go with your darker of your two blues all over. And then with your lighter one, you're just going to kind of dribble blobs so that's the best way to describe it I don't think that's a real technical term but you're just going to kind of dribble it all over and then with your paintbrush you'll just swirly whirl all the way through so you get this lovely marble effect once all of your colour is on you're then going to blast dry it so don't have your heat too close but it's going to be close enough that it's going to warm this up and you should see really quickly it will start to change it loses its shine and then you'll start getting these cracks coming in and that's what we're aiming for what happens, as I say, is those cracks will then stay and when it's fired, they then all the black comes through and you get this beautiful finish on there. If we just pull all of this glaze on and let it dry naturally and it all soaks in and everything's wonderful, when we fire it, it's going to have a real issue and it will start to crawl. It will pull away from the bisque and it's not going to work as well. Now, I did get a little bit of that with my Father Christmas. I'm only getting these bits off because those are glazed. Now, I don't know if you can see, Whoa, I moved the camera. This bit here is a crawled bit that's actually pulled away. That goes right down to bisque. Um, there wasn't enough drying on here, so I put it on, but it didn't go enough. The beard went brilliantly. The, the sky went really well. This bit on the hat, it didn't kind of do its cracking enough. I should have blasted this for a little bit longer, really, and made it dry a little bit quicker. Um, so you're aiming for these multiple cracks coming through as you're drying. Now, just to show you, just, just to add there as well, just a button. Yeah, um, when you dry it, you see the cracks come, but they look like hairline cracks. And then in the kiln, that gives the, the glaze that opportunity to then open up and pull apart a little bit more. So they don't always look as distinct as they do on these fired pieces. It's, it looks a little bit like um, wrinkly skin when you've done it today. It's that kind of wrinkly... Yeah, I can, show you, I can show you my frown lines. And then there you go. go. Just like Pip's forehead, that is the look we're all going for. So everyone take a close-up of this. <laughs> here, look, we can... What we're aiming for. <laughs> Perfect, lovely. <laughs> attractive. Beautiful. I'll go now. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> that was my YouTube moment. Wonderful. Five seconds of fame. <laughs> So when um, you've actually got a lot of glaze in here, so if you guys run out of glaze, I'm going to be really worried how these are going to fire because there's lots and lots of glaze in these little bottles. Um, they're really pliable, so you don't need to squeeze too much, but I'm just going to show you the kind of thickness that I want you to aim for. Now, my wax is now dry, but do be aware, you can rest against your piece. Sorry, I'm not showing you properly, but if you've got any wet bits, just watch that you're not printing that all over. Um, I would work flat on the table normally, but I just want to show you guys how, how we're going here. So we're just going to give it a little squeeze here and out that glaze comes. Now you can see that it's puddling on. Hmm, she says. I'm going to show you. There we go. That's the sort of thickness I'm going for. 
And then I'm just going to push that up there towards that wax. And you'll see, I don't know if you can see that on there, it comes back off the wax again. It doesn't want to be on the wax. So I'm just going to move that around on the bit that I want to be white. So this is inside my little penguin's wing. I look like a little child come out here because it, it's just all squishy and there's just thick glaze and you can just relax and move it around. You can't go too wrong because you've already walled it off. So this little bottle makes a kind of weird sucky noise. And <laughs> actually it's quite good because it almost sucks the glaze back up again if you've gone a bit too far. But just to show you, oh, I keep knocking it. Oh, I'll make you all feel sick while you're looking. Can you see how raised that is off of the tile? There is a quite a distinctive blob of glaze there. That's what we're aiming for. However, I don't want that to dry. So now I've committed, I'm gonna go for it and we just need to keep going. So the idea is you just get squeezing, get moving around. You should be able to move it with the nib on here, but if you're having trouble, use your small paintbrush and then work your way around and then we're going to start blasting with a hairdryer. Now, now is the time to unmute yourself and talk to us if you've got any worries while you're going. Obviously Pip's watching you guys too, um, but I'm gonna, concentrate on doing this little guy at the same time so please by all means just, can i just ask are yeah. we doing one color and then blasting that color no we're going to do all of it and then blast the whole tile the whole tile okay yeah. that's the best way start... to do it sorry um, should you start with the big areas first so start with one color and do all I the work so i'm going to go start with the biggest area I'm going to go for white on my penguin and then I'm going to do his scarf and his orange beak and then I'm going in for blue and then I'll do the white snowballs at the end oh, because okay. I, don't lean, I don't want to lean in the blue but my white is my oh. area. Then I'm going to come in and do my scarf and then I'm going to do my blue and then I can just blob my white really easily without having to rest my hand down. Can we leave the top off the colour when we're going in between colours? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the nib is fine enough that I don't think these are drying. So when I took the top off of this earlier to show you it, um, right at the beginning, I hadn't put it back on and it hasn't made a difference at all. So okay. I think it's fine, just keep putting it down as you go. And we don't need to shake it or anything. No, it should be good to go. Now you might find that it splat, like kind of splats out a little bit, so just be aware of that as you get going. Um, but no, it should be all right. And I guess you try not to drag it on the black. Yeah, you want to kind of hover above it. So once you start squeezing, you'll find that the nib, you can actually be quite a way off of the bisque without, uh, while still being able to move the glaze, but without scratching the black. So we always talk about how when you use the writer bottles, you're putting a thin layer and it's not like icing a cake. But when you do this, this is a lot more like flood icing on a cake, that you're squeezing it out and letting it fill and run into these areas. So it moves quite quickly and, and you keep it going whilst the glaze is wet. Um, but you're, you're, you're squeezing a decent amount of glaze out onto these and letting it kind of flood and pull around. If you didn't have the wax there, it would just run into an amorphous mess. But that's why we put the wax there, so that you could, you could get this to stay where you want it. Can I ask a quick question? I've got a different shaped bottle and it doesn't seem to be coming out. Do I need to cut no, the end off it? You do need to cut the end off. I'm so sorry. With yours, you'll see on that nib, there's like, um, it kind of goes up in a nice point. And then and there's a finer point. Yeah, you want to just cut just below that solid bit at the top. Apologies for that, Lisa. I That's right. And the other quick question I've got is, did you say that you could wash the paint brushes with hand soap as well as washing up liquid? Actually, yeah, yeah, hand soap works just as well. Now. Lay the scarf um, on the snowman. Is it literally just lay the next colour on top of it? Yeah. So your yes. So your red will be, or say if you're using red like we did, you will then add your orange over the top. So you're just going to kind of yeah, like blob little bits, do do dots, do lines, whatever it is you're wanting to do. But yes, you'll just lay it over the top in that in that other colour. Is there a trick for getting the lid off the bottles? Oh yeah, I'll push struggle. down. They are child lock bottles. I think they're designed for eye drops. So push down like you would cow pole. Push down and twist. Christina, do you know what they're really designed for? Oh God, what? They're designed for vaping liquids. 
Right. Yeah, to fill your fill your what I I don't vape. I don't know what the term. The is. <laughs> it's to fill your vaping thing, <laughs> your puffing thing. Um, <sighs> but they just seemed like the most appropriate thing to find. And they hold loads of glaze. I did have a nightmare the other night that I hadn't given you enough, and that you'd all be coming back to me over the next five days to get more. <laughs> there is plenty here. It's all good. <laughs> it was just my brain playing mean tricks on me when I'm trying to sleep. Well, we were a bit creative with the bottles we found, but they held the right amount of glaze, so it should should have been fine. So just to let you know, speed wise, my penguin is nearly full. I'm just doing the last bit of his other wing. You want to just kind of squeeze this on and get it moving around. So Penguin is now white. There's quite a lot of glaze on there. It's a like Pip was saying, it's a bit like when you um, paint a um, kind of icing fill on a biscuit. Like if you outlined a biscuit and then um, you kind of dribble the icing in there. It's very similar to that. Are you looking to try and get an even layer? No, it will even up in the kiln. You're aiming to get a quick squidged on layer. Okay. And keep moving it around and working over the top. <laughs> so I don't know if you can see mine coming out. I'm trying to get close enough so that it's in focus. But I'm basically, I'm squeezing. It's then pouring almost. It's kind of trying to cause a drip. So I'm just pulling that up as I go. Just push it a little bit where you want it to be. So one, one kind of option for doing this that, that was suggested on, on a few forums was using a syringe that people had kind of sucked up the glaze or put the glaze into a syringe and did it, which, but I think you have a lot less control with that. But the idea is that you can just go and squish it out and then it moves around and it pulls and it puddles around. Yeah. That was quite a good noise. That was, I was going to say, you just blew a raspberry on YouTube as well. Raspberries on YouTube frowning angry faces on youtube were all good um can i ask about the blue yes um do you just squirt that on as well just you like... do yeah you're going to do the same so you're going to do your blue all the way around and then you're going to swirl wow you're ahead of me you're speeding on because <laughs> no, lucas has got the white so i can't see the blue oh okay so yeah you're going to work the other way around um have you not got two whites in your kit no, I just had a big bottle of white. Oh, you've got a big bottle. Sorry, Sam. That's um, all right. Yeah. You didn't expect so, it. So, um, yes, with the blue. So I'm just about to start mine. I'm going to start one end. I'm just going to work my way around. So on it goes. Just blob it on. Right. Over okay. around. Yeah. Brilliant. So when you get to the edge of your tile, there is no wax. So just um, kind of leave a little bit of a black gap and then it will um, not pour over the edge. Have I done everything? Nearly. I've just got the blue to do. I'm kind of worried I don't have enough blue. Mummy! What? You're doing the dark blue. This is the dark blue. Sure. So there is a lot less blue on the snowman than there is the penguin. So because I did the snowman before, I was really surprised at how little blue I used. And I think I put in a lot more of the light blue as well. So you want to get your covering on this, but this doesn't necessarily have to be thick as you've done your white, because you're gonna add your light blue too. So you just wanna get this covered and then you'll swirl your light blue through. So you're going to actually add more glaze when the lighter blue goes on top. So when I did mine, I actually left kind of gappy bits. So mine, rather than looking quite so liney swirled, was a bit more blotchy coming in. So I had kind of, and then I kind of feathered them together on my little boundaries. So you don't have to stick with that kind of swirling through design either. You could do patches. Like blotches, yeah, like, like that. You could leave that and then add in your, your light blue if you wanted to.
if you go over the wax, will it just, it will just you, rub off, will it? You should find that the wax tries to push it back. It tries to push it kind of away again, but if it hasn't done that, then just with a slightly wet paintbrush, you can um, push it back away from where it's gone, where it shouldn't be. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And moving it with a paintbrush works really nicely as well. So I've just put a big blob on there and I'm just taking my paintbrush in on its side, just very gently guiding that glaze where I want it to go. So this isn't painting, this is more kind of moving the blob of glaze around. So squeeze a blob. On the side of my brush and then I'm just sort of moving it around. This is probably gentler on your hand. It's yeah. And a little bit goes on really long. So my sky is really thick. I found I've got a bit too blue happy. Because I haven't added my light yet. So I'm just going to come back over here and just take some of that from the other side because I went really heavy with it. I'm just going to splodge it on with my brush. Bearing in mind, I've got the light blue to add, so don't worry if you can see some of this black tone coming through, um, because you're going to swirl your light blue through the top. Okay, so LB is your light blue, so just to bear that in mind. If you accidentally swirl white, it's going to work fine anyway, it'll look beautiful, but the idea is it should be the light blue coming in. And then the way I did it was I just kind of went over the top like this and did these funny little swirly bits. Bear in mind there's a lot of glaze on there already. But this is then what will fill in your gaps if you um, spread your lighter blue out. And then I just, with the end of my paintbrush, just twirly whirled like this. Twirly whirl is the technical term. My blue glaze has filled one of my hanging holes. I'm not going to worry too much about it now, but before I fire it, I'll make sure that it's not um, filled. Otherwise, you won't be able to hang these up. Um, so if yours has done the same, don't worry. It will be okay. I will fix it when it comes into the studio. So that is now mine done. I am going to um, turn my microphone off and just start blasting it. But when I can come back on, I will chat to you guys and speak to you then. Just to let you know that my red and my orange look exactly the same. It's like I haven't used anything. My white, I've still got this much left plus another one. Um, and my blues, I'm on half a bottle of each. So that's the kind of amount that you're aiming for. But as I say, I'm just going to switch my microphone off so you're not just listening to me hair dry. And then I'll be back with you guys in a sec. You haven't done your snowballs. Oh, thanks. Yes. <laughs> Everyone needs black snowballs, don't they? My goodness. No, that would be wrong. Right, okay. here we go. Drink cold. Huh? Drink cold. Yeah. Thank you, whoever pointed that out for me. Sue. Sue gets the gold star. Well done. <laughs> So with my snowballs, I'm literally just blobbing this on because the wax um, just resists it. It just pushes it back up in a nice little blob. So they were really easy to do. Right, now I'm muting. I'm going to hair dry. Thank you, Sue.
Christina, I've spotlighted you. <laughs> yeah, you're really concentrating. <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> In fact, it would be really good if Christina had a mute button for when you're in the studio with her. <laughs> <laughs> How full on do you want the hairdryer? Um, Low, sort of. So you want not, the, not the big fan or the medium fan? So um, the kind of the medium fan. So you want it hot, but if you if you have it too close, it will kind of blow your blaze away into ripples. So so you want it to be hot when it hits the tile, so on a hot heat, but a kind of a low speed fan. Okay, what colour do I do his beak? I was trying to stare at Christina's iPhone. It's fine. Let me spotlight that again for you. So it's oh, so it's orange. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you can see mine, but it's changed colour really quickly. Um, I will burn myself now picking it up just to show you. But he, this um, around the edge of his red has changed really quick, but you can see that he started to crater. Um, so I'm going to keep going, but this is the kind of effect that you want it to be. So at the moment, it's still quite shiny. Um, this, this, is, this is what we're aiming for. Is there another trick for opening these bottles? I'm completely failing. Um, it is a, it's a, it's a push down and a twist. Um, um, yeah, there's not really another trick, I'm afraid. It's kind of push, pushing down enough that it kind of engages, that you can then twist it. This makes it a very frustrating workshop. I can't do it. My son can't do it either. Um, okay, right hand twist. Sorry, I forgot about that one. Christina, have you got any other options or solutions? Can you hear us? Have you got an issue with the lid? Mm, and Judith just can't get into it at all. Have you got any ideas as you were putting them on? So you can get them off by just pulling really hard and twisting up. So battle the bottle. You're going to go against its, its kind of want to do it, but you can click it off like that. So you can go the opposite way. So don't squeeze your bottle. But like with mine there, I don't know if you can see, uh, which one are we on? This one. Yeah, no. so it's not, it won't unscrew because it's not doing anything. You can either push down and engage it like that. You really have to push till it clicks and then it will undo. Or just grabbing it and pulling and twisting, kind of bend it a bit and eventually it will come off the top. Hang on. That, was that, just the um, child lock bit that I left on when you did that. Put it back on now. Oh, it didn't a minute ago. Yeah, hold on. You can't. Oh. <laughs> now the whole thing. <laughs> when I did it facing that camera, it just came off. I was like, oh yeah, that'll work. Hold on. Hmm. Can you push down and get your click at all? I can't get a click. Uh, I've managed to get one light open. I haven't managed to open any of the others. So they should, just to show you mine, they should sit with a bit of a wiggle like that. Is yours doing that? Mine's got a blue rim underneath it. No, oh, yours does have a blue rim, which means you should be able to pull yours off. So this is a new style, but the blue ones, I managed to take a whole set apart. So, um, you know, you've got like a, a rim around the bottom of that yeah. lid. If you can break the little joins with your finger or with your pen, 
you should then be able to twist that top and pull it off, like almost kind of battle against it. Is the blue bit a seal? Is it a... a, a yeah, your, yours are more like a sports bottle top, whereas this has got the true child lock, these white ones. Judy, mine just snapped when I twisted them. Judy, maybe try a pair of scissors at the bottom to cut yeah. the bit that's gripping it. <laughs> Peel the bottom bit off. Everything yes. involved. <laughs> Hi, Stefan. Please don't cut yourself, though. Sounded good. That sounded like those little bits went. Still not there. Feel a bit helpless. Kind of yeah, want to just... open it for you. This is the most helpless I think we felt over over the Zoom workshop. Very much so. Very very much so. But why not take cut? Why not slice top off the thing and use your paintbrush instead of using the tip? Because you can't get to that bit to even slice it. There you go, Stefan. What are you doing, Seth? <laughs> <laughs> we just cut I love it. <laughs> so if the top's now completely off, the best thing to do is to hold your piece, pour it on, and then use your paintbrush on its side and move it around. So Christina, we might need to give another set of glazes out because the yeah. will now dry out. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll go Are you got other bottles opening at all? Was it just that one? And that's all. I managed to open one bottle okay. successfully. One white one. Dry, do we need to make it? I know you said about the cracking. Yeah, so the dry one is now like this. So the only shine on it, so the blue is not completely dry, I could switch that. And um, the white's almost there. I want to dry it more, but I was helping Judy with that because I want to make sure she can get into her paint. So you want to go a bit drier than this, you want it so that it's up to dry. So can you go too dry? No. Or, no, okay, great. No. So you might find that you've dried it and it looks completely dry and then when you stop with your hair dryer, there's patches that come up again that kind of look damp still. That's okay. If you've dried it to the point where it's completely lost its time, then good to go. 
So, can I unmute? you, Christina. So, I was saying, if you dry to the point where it's completely lost its shine, it will go really pale. But if it's soft, Hi. Right, we're good. Okay, so if you dry to the point where it completely loses its shine, it then goes really, really pale, and then you'll stop drying, and patches like this will come back up again because that glaze is really thick there. There is still moisture underneath that's trying to work its way up, but that is fine. I've got cracking coming in all around. I really like how this is looking on here. All is good. Now, these snowballs, just be careful because they are so proud and they're big that they are easily knocked. So I have knocked this one, but I'm just going to leave it because actually the glaze is quite stable there. His eyes look a bit weird. I'm hoping that the wax resist is just going to push that glaze away when we fire it. But now my plan is I'm leaving this overnight so they really dry. These bobbly bits are going to be completely dry by then. So that is then your finished tile ready to come back and be fired. Is everyone hair drying now? Yeah. Yeah, lots of hair drying going on. Lots of muting being going on. 